Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video, I'm Mikon and what you're looking at right now is the power plant that I'm going to show you. This video is going to be split up into two parts. The first part is going to be a tour of the power plant. I'm going to show you how it's built and what's, what kind of mods I've used. Part two is going to be comprised of a run-through of the maintenance system that I've done in ComputerCraft. So it's, com it's a program uh, or several programs really that I've made uh, which controls uh, the uh, reactors and turbines but more on that later uh, right now we're gonna start off with the tour as you can see it's a fairly large building uh, it's built of a reactor hall which is the large part here in the back and then uh, this uh, elongated part here is where I have uh, water pump systems turbines etc Right, let's dive right in through the main entrance. And here we reach the main hallway, where we have doors leading into the turbine hall. And we have a staircase over here. So let's go up the top of the staircase first of all. And I'm just going to show you uh, very quickly uh, the top of the reactor hall. Here we are. So, uh, as most most nuclear power plants, this one has a pool of water covering the top lid of the reactor, which you can see there down in the in the pool. Uh, and this building is fairly tall, so uh, since you have the top of the reactor here, you can assume that it's pretty large. We also have a maintenance shaft here for uh, changing fuel rods, if this was a real nuclear power plant. And as you can see, it's quite deep. You have a couple of stories down. You don't want to fall down there. Now, as you probably can guess, this is mostly cosmetic, but it still looks pretty awesome. Alright, let's head down to the basement where we have the good stuff. Right, here we are. Uh, this is the sub-level uh, basement hallway where we have a door into the reactor hall and our data center. And also over here we have the cooled water facility, which I'm not going to show very much of, but this is where the reactor gets its water uh, supplied from. So, not much more to talk about there. Let's head into the main reactor hall instead. Uh, we can see that we have the base of the reactor over there and we have the data center here which really isn't much of a data center it is uh, a couple of ME drives from applied energistics which contain the fuel for the reactor and if we go into the access terminal here we can see that currently we have roughly 5000 gelorium ingots and over 14k of the plutonium ingot which is a refined uh, cyanide ingot. A cyanide ingot is a waste product from the uh, big reactors, those guys. Um, so that's, that's basically it. It doesn't fill any more purpose than that. Uh, to the left here we can see that we have an advanced computer from Computercraft. I'm gonna go into more detail about that later on. So I'm gonna leave it for now. Heading out as I said, this is the main reactor, uh, named Sarah. And this is the one that supplies uh, steam for the turbines I'm going to show you later on. And if we check the panel here, it's spinning up at around 170 degrees Celsius, producing roughly 3,500 millibuckets per tick. So, and it's hardly even warm thanks to the efficient cooling built into the reactor. Um, what you see here are the wires, cables and whatnot that supports the um, um, fueling system. So fuel goes in, waste comes out, waste goes into the cyanide reprocessor where it becomes plutonium. Now on the other side here we have a smaller reactor which is a uh, emergency reactor. So if the turbines would generate too, not, not enough power, this one would be activated and start generating power to keep the system up. 
Now, every reactor and turbine has a computer connected to them. I'm going to explain more in detail what they're doing, but everything is connected into one system. Right, let's head up to the turbine hall. Here we are. As you can see, we're back in the main hallway. And we're going into the turbine hall, which is a pretty large area. Uh, it has, if I go over here, it has two turbines, both powered by the same big reactor uh, as we saw earlier. And there's plenty of room for more, which is intended. Uh, right now I only have two because that's what my uh, big reactor can produce steam for. And, and these guys have these redstone energy conduits connected to a tesseract. So they are wirelessly sending the energy out into the Minecraft world. These guys also have a computer connected to them and of course this is their panel. They're going at around 1800 RPMs which is a pretty good uh, number because they generate uh, around 14,500 15, 14, RFs per tick. So pretty efficient. Now, there's not much more to the general structure of the power plant. So I'm going to start off with uh, the maintenance system that keeps everything uh, running and keeping it uh, on a good level. All right, so we're going to start in the data center. Right, as you recall, we were talking about the advanced computer that's here before. This happens to be the main uh, server in this entire network. Its job is to uh, listen to updates from each node, which is the turbines and reactors, and handle the information in a way so that it doesn't break down and it's power efficient. It does this with its program, which I'm going to show you here in short. Uh, let's see what's it called. It's called nuclear server. Nuclear server. So it has a couple of channels it listens or commands to. Uh, update channel, which is 50, is the one it listens to for new data from each node. The command channel is where it goes the other way around. It issues commands to reactors and turbines. And the read channel is for other stuff. The server program stores all the data in memory, in this table right here, stored data. Uh, it reads everything it gets from the update channel, which is from both the turbines and reactors, and it keeps it in this table. Uh, the reason why we don't store it in a file is because we don't need it to be um, persisted. It's always a snapshot of the latest data, so there's no real need to save anything. Uh, it uses a modem, of course, and it has a main loop down here, which does this. It checks if there's any new messages. If there's no messages, it will just skip that part. And if it's necessary, it will send commands in this loop as well. Um, and the last thing it does is use the very nice HTTP API to post the data to our external page. So it's pretty simple and it just keeps doing this over and over and over forever. Let's see if we can't reactivate it here. Goodbye, thank you. All right, so that's back online, listening to any incoming data. Uh, for each node, uh, which is the reactors and turbines, we have two computer programs. Let's see, I'm gonna shut this one down. And we can see we have a folder, which is hard to see here but it's a folder we have a folder called reactor and we have a file called startup now startup uses the parallel api to run two programs at once it has the reactor client which uh, updates the server with uh, all new data from these this node and we have the reactor client controller which uh, listens to any commands issued by the server so that it can uh, change its behavior and let's go into a little bit more detail here we have the two we'll check the original client first uh, it uses channel 50 which is the update channel and it simply runs an eternal loop and sends data to the server uh, 
each uh, each other tick can't really remember the time frame for sleep but it's pretty often so the server will always be updated with the latest it also has a kill switch which should never happen but you know just in case can't be too sure right lost program reactor client controller which looks like this uh, not much different it uses channel 51 so it's a listener not a publisher but this one too has an eternal loop uh, in this loop it listens for any messages and if you get anything it checks the command right now this one only has two commands which is set active and set rod level set active is whether the reactor should be active or not and rod level is um, the control rods how far down they're going those control uh, the fission in the reactor so the more let's see if I remember the higher the number the less energy or steam in this case it produces so this is the, the most used control for uh, reactors now the programs look fairly pretty much the same on turbines they have a couple different commands but in general it's the same so I'm not going to showcase them separately what I am going to do now since we have gone through the basic of basics of the system is do a small demonstration and the demonstration is going to, going to be when reactor 2 the emergency reactor activates it will only activate if there's too little power in the turbines so we're going to deactivate the first reactor here which supplies steam to the turbines and we're going to see what happens now of course it's not very fun to watch in minecraft because you can't see anything really so we're going to check the external panel for any changes so let's see here if we can't get it up and running here here we are let's see everything seems to be operational reactor one is working as it should turbines active emergency emergency is off uh, as you can see here right so let's head on back to minecraft for a second and deactivate reactor one all right here we go it's now off and we're gonna go back to the panel here so we can see now that reactor 1 is inactive and uh, the turbines both lost all their steam input flow so they're back down to zero the RPM meter is slowly slowing down and we also see that energy produced is dropping rapidly if you haven't worked with big reactors and turbines before uh, turbines work pretty much like this if they're around 900 or 1800 rpms they produce uh, most energy the most energy uh, 1800 is preferable but 900 is working pretty well too uh, and any number in between is not very good now as you can see here as soon as the energy stored in the turbines drop to zero react to emergency hit active and started working so what we can see here is that reactor 2 is producing roughly 7000 RF per tick and it has a pretty okay temperature. It's a lot hotter than reactor 1 but then again it's smaller and doesn't have as efficient cooling. But here you have it. You can see that reactor 2 was uh, activated when the turbines stopped producing enough power. So it's a pretty pretty decent system and it's the server as I mentioned before that controls all of this so one single program all right let's not keep this up for long we need to re uh, reactivate the first reactor here and we can go back to the panel and just look to see if anything happens now the turbines got the steam input flow back but they're still down on under a thousand RPMs and they're gonna take some time to speed up so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna speed up time hang on Alright, 
So now we can see that reactor 2 started to get an excess of energy output, which means that it gets stored. And also soon after it was inactivated because then the turbines started to, pr to produce enough electricity. So it's going to need a little bit more time to rev up to 1800 RPMs, but we're going to leave that for now. But at least you could see that the system works. Reactor 1 is active, the emergency one is inactive because it's not needed anymore, and the turbines are slowly regaining its full capacity. So there you have it, the nuclear power plant in Tekkit. As I've mentioned before, the only mods I've used is basically uh, big reactors for you know the entire system, and we have used some applied energistics to uh, for the uh, storage item storage. Hi everyone, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button below. If you want to know anything else about the video, leave a comment and let me know. See you next time.